Greetings from Owen Field after the annual OU Red White Spring Game. I am Nate Fakin for the Tulsa World OU Sports Extra Team, joined by beat writers Eric Bailey and Mason Young. Today was another day with a look at Jackson Arnold after that Alamo Bowl. What did you kind of see from him out there, and uh, what what? You know, what did he bring for the Sooner fans today? Well, it's always Christmas in April when this game's played. And behind us, I know the camera's not picking it up. There are tons of OU fans getting autographs from the team. Everyone's excited for football. Everyone's excited for Jackson Arnold. He put on a show today, Nate, fourth play of the game. He throws a 64-yard touchdown pass to Deion Burks. A little bit later, through another 50-yard pass to Deion Burks. Jackson looks really confident out there. He's taking command of the offense. I had a chance to talk to him after the game. Him and Seth Luttrell are in sync. They're excited about working with each other. Uh, this is his team. This is his offense. He understands it. And it, it, was, it was fun to watch today. Yeah, there's some spring games you go to. You don't see any big plays. We got to see a few today. A bunch of those touchdowns came from newcomer from uh, Purdue, uh, Deion Burks. What'd you see from him, Mason? Yeah, right. The 64-yarder. That was the first touchdown of the game, and and the uh, the one later in the game that went for 50 yards. I mean, just incredible. Showed off the blazing speed that we've heard about all spring. We finally, you know, got to see it in person. And Deion Burks, you know, by all accounts, by what we saw today, like he looks like he's going to be a star. Like it just, it just feels like that. Uh, obviously, OU's had some talented receivers, and the room was already deep when you think about Jalil Farouk and Nick Anderson and some of the other guys that they had coming back from last year. But he just adds another, a whole other element. Has that that star potential, similar to like a, a Marquise Brown or a, a CD Lamb, and, and so really, really, really impressive to watch. Just and just the fact too that you know he wasn't, it wasn't weaving in and out, or it wasn't. I mean, he could break tackles if he wanted to, but. I mean, he was just taking the top off the OU defense. And I asked Danny Stutzman about that after the game. And obviously, you know, they don't, they're frustrated by that. They don't want to give up explosives. But, but I mean, Burks, to have that on the opposite side, you know, working for you come, you know, first season in the SEC, I think uh, OU's got to be really excited about that. Sure, there were some newcomers on the defensive line, offensive line, a lot of eyes on people like David Stone. What did you see out of uh, the trenches on both sides of the ball today for the Sooners? Right. I mean, it, it, a big a big thing was the improvement of some of the guys that have been around for a while that OU needs to be more than just guys this season. We saw Devon Sears and Grayson Halton both have a couple of sacks. Those are guys that uh, didn't play a ton of snaps last year, but now with some of the attrition and, and departures on the defensive line, especially in the interior, those are guys that OU is going to need to play more next season. And uh, they looked really good. You mentioned David Stone, the, the freshman, you know, former five-star recruit getting in there and, and getting a couple sacks. And another, you know, former five-star in P.J. Adebare uh, putting some pressure on. Uh, and then another guy, you know, you think of that's, that's Mr. Consistent last year that, could maybe even take things to another level this coming year is Ethan Downs. He was great today, had tons of sacks and, and TFLs. And uh, you, you, you feel a lot better after actually seeing it today about where that group could be, could be you know, going into next season. Obviously, OU is still looking to make some additions. You know, they're in on several you know, transfer defensive tackles in the portal. And uh, if they can land those guys, you know, they're going to be that much better. But, but from what we saw today, uh, you feel a little bit better. And, and on the flip side, you know, even, even with all those sacks, uh, you know, OU's offensive line has been a concern all, all offseason because of all the changes that they've had, all the turnover with uh, pretty much everybody that was a, a starter last year hopping in the portal or going to the NFL draft. A lot of new faces between transfers and, and underclassmen that didn't play last year. But even with those sacks today, they looked pretty good. You know, you think about it this way, Jackson Arnold still had to have the time to throw uh, those, you know, clean, pretty balls to, to Deion Burks. And so uh, a pretty good showing from the offensive line as well and, and feeling a lot better after this one uh, about OU, how they look in the trenches going into the SEC. Uh, that's right, and we should uh, say sacks in quotes, like Dr. Yeah. Evil mode, right? It was sure. just yeah. two-hand touch on those guys. Yeah. Maybe, sack yeah, the, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So hopefully the fans uh, took that in as well, that that was a sack. As you mentioned, SEC's coming up next for the Sooners. you got to have good line play to play well in that conference. Eric, what what is waiting for the Sooners come next season in the fall? A lot of preparation. There's a lot of, of people visiting today. They said over about around 100 recruits watch this game. And if you look around the stadium, you see nothing referencing the Big 12 except for one sign on the press box. The field had a, hit, a hat tip to Toby Keith. There's no Big 12 logo on the field. If you looked up on the scoreboard, there were 16 flagpoles, red and white 
flags, no Big 12 flags up there. 16 is how many members are in the SEC. They're making preparations here for that move. When they made the talk, the pregame video mentioned the move to the southeast. They didn't say southeastern conference, they said southeast. Everything's getting put in place for July the 1st when Oklahoma officially becomes a member of the Southeastern Conference. So everything behind the scenes is making moves for that, both on the field with recruiting and off the field in terms of logistics. It's hard to believe 2021, we were talking years for this jump. Now we're just weeks away from this jump. And it started today with everything we saw on the field, preparing Jackson Arnold, Deion Burks, this defense, Zach Alley. It's going to be here before we knew it, know it. This is the last spring game as a Big 12 institution. In a couple of weeks, this will be an SEC school. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. As they say, it just means more, and it just means more for the Tulsa World OU Sports Extra team. For Eric Bailey and Mason Young, I am Nate Fagan from Owen Field. Keep uh, locked into the website for all things OU coverage.